In this video I'll briefly explain how to set up a character rig uh, in 3DS Max. So what I have here is just a basic character rig for a model of a ninja character. So we'll break it down from step by step to how I got to this point. So first off let me just hide this uh, the character object. Uh, and after you finish modeling and texturing the character you want to add the basic skeletal rig for the character. So let me just hide this character rig or the actual model to show you the character rig. So with this method I just created a skeletal system from uh, scratch. I didn't use the biped rig that I was already built with the 3DS Max. So I just built skeletal rig uh, and I color coded each side so I can use a bit to see which this is the left side and the right side. Uh, so left is blue, right is red. I also have some other controls in here which I'll get to here in a little bit. So but this is the skeleton rig. Uh, and 3ds Max doesn't create the actual joints, it actually creates the bones. Uh, so whenever you select something that's an actual bone. So you can name these by simply coming in here and selecting the same way you would name a, an object. Or you can also use a different view called the schematic view. Which is this button right up here, schematic view. And it'll show you a hierarchy list of your skeletal rig and any other objects in your scene. So here's my skeletal system here and it's all lined up for me. Uh, as with the model is. might not be as this clean as uh, the first time you create the rig, uh, but you can simply go around and move these around pretty easily uh, and it will line up the rigs exactly how you want to. I would set it up similar to this to where the legs are side by side uh, and the arms so on the right side. Uh, so you're able to see these and you can also come in here and if you uh, double click you can rename any joint in here pretty easily. So this is the schematic view. So after you create the actual skeleton rig, let me unhide my geometry. After you create the skeletal rig, you need to then attach the skeleton to the actual geometry. And that's through the use of the skin modifier. So in the modifier list, uh, you actually apply it to the geometry, not to the skeleton. So the modifier list, there should be one that says skin. Not one of the other ones, there's some other skin morph wrap, wrap patch, but just the basic skin. So you apply that to the model and here's what it looks like and underneath the modifier list you would come down here and where it says bones I already have the bones added but you would come up here and choose add and it pulls up this prompt menu and it will show you any bone that hasn't already been attached to the geometry yet um, so you would select all of the bones click select and that will automatically add all those bones to uh, your skeletal system to the geometry so as default 3ds Max, go ahead and put uh, an envelope of how it attaches the vertices to each joint. And you're able to see this by clicking on the edit envelopes uh, button right up at the top of the modifier list of the skin modifier. And as default it will show you the highlighted areas which is affected by each, um, each joint. So you can cycle through. These are a little uh, blotchy because the mirror uh, option is set later on. Uh, which I can explain here in a minute. So what you need to do is go through and move some of the joints around and this character rig already has some IK handles so when you move it around you're able to move more of the body but you can just move just the basic joints. So what you need to do is go through each joint and make sure the body moves how it should be. There will be some areas like the arms, uh, the legs, and the fingers where there will be too much movement uh, or the joint will be affecting too many vertices elsewhere on the body. So you go back through and choose edit envelope and edit these uh, the vertices uh, through a different couple different ways down here whether the through the weight properties uh, you can actually ch click on a vertice by going up here at the top and choosing vertice let's turn on the vertice so we can see those and if you select one vertice or actually on the spine 3 and change this through the absolute effect it'll change that uh, between 0 to 1 um, and that is 0% uh, affecting this vertice versus 100% affecting this vertice. So you can go through, through doing it that way or through the use of the paint weights tool which is more of like a paintbrush. Either way it will work uh, but uh, no matter which way you do it it will still take some time to be able to get the bones of geometry to work exactly how you want to. So after you're finished then you can scroll down move out here a little more to uh, the mirror parameters of the skin modifier and choose mirror mode 
and we have to click that mode and then select your vertices and then use the actual correct uh, mirror option which it'll probably be paste green to blue or if you choose a blue side uh, but choose the green to blue verts don't mess with the bones one but choose the ones that says blue green to blue verts or blue to green verts the other thing is you'll probably have to turn up the offset and the threshold so my offset was set to negative 9 my mirror threshold was set to 10 and that way it got so it mirrors completely half over uh, and of course make sure the mirror planes on the right axis which is X for this model so that way you only really have to edit the weights for one side and mirror it all the way over to the other side like it's shown here so that is uh, the skin modifier so after you do that after you apply the skin weights and uh, get that all situated then you'd want to come in here and add some IK handles to make animation a little bit easier for you so I have four IK handles uh, one for each arm, one for each appendage and then I actually have one for each foot as well to make it a little bit easier to move the character so now I can handle just inverse kinematics, uh, which is an easier way to move more than one joint at one time. So if I move a joint, or if I move my IK handle from my left arm, it moves it up and down. Now the way I actually do this is by selecting the top joint that I want to have uh, the IK handle on, and go up to the animation menu, and then IK solvers, and you can choose one of the other two, but I'm going to choose the HI solver. And then when I do that, it should allow me to have a dotted line, and then I can select the bone, which in this case is the wrist bone, to create my IK handle for here. So that's how I did that. So then I created the IK handle, and you can do that for each arm as well as each leg. So the leg would be the hip to the ankle, and I also have another one for each foot, so that when I move the character up and down, those feet stay in place. So I also added what's called a dummy control. And a dummy, dummy control can be created that is not a rendable object, so it won't render out, but it'll help you be able to select the character. Um, under the Create tab, and it says Helpers, if I click on a dummy, it's just a box shape, and you can really do use an actual curve as well, but a box will work. So all I did was here was a, create this box, and then with the Select and Link tool, I link that to my actual pelvis control here. So I don't have to go into wireframe mode to be able to select my pelvis control. I just can just select my dummy control, which is labeled the pelvis control. Up and down, it'll move the middle base of the character. So that's an easy way to move the character. And as you notice, considering all my IK handles are in place, those stay in place. So it looks like it's more of a natural movement for a character. So the next step would be animating the character. Animation is pretty easy. Uh, we have the timeline down here, and you can move it to whatever frame. And see, I already have some animation on my character here. So in order to set the animation, set the keyframes, you need to turn on the auto key button or the set key button. If you're just starting, I would suggest the set key button. So once you turn that on, you're able to see that the set key is on because there will be a red border around the viewport. So if you select a control, all you have to do is go to the frame you want to create uh, the key for and hit the big key button. It says set key. You can't see it right there, but it does say set key. And then move the frame and click set key again. So here's my animation for this character. Here's the playback options. Just a bowing animation and then a kicking animation. And you can scrub back and forth to be able to see what the animation looks like and move a keyframe if you need to by just clicking and dragging on the keyframe to wherever you need it to be. You can also clone a keyframe by holding down shift and moving that wherever you want it to be. So same idea as with moving an object. So if you want to change the time of the animation there is the time configuration button right down here and you're able to change what frame rate uh, how many frames are in the timeline some other options in here so but that should be it as far as setting up a character for a character rig uh, and skinning the weights creating some basic controls the IK handles and a dummy control and then setting up an animation like this right here And that's it. Thanks for watching.